a very uh, important, very important question. Um, I, I uh, have had quite a tortured uh, um, uh, track record on this, on this one for the following reason, which is that I, um, I said for a long time one of my great fears in Europe generally, in my country in particular, would be that in the end, decent ordinary people, if the mainstream politicians didn't finally address these questions, decent ordinary people would find themselves stuck between Islamic fascists and other fascists, fighting it out between themselves. Now, I say that as a general point. However, on the question of the English Defence League, this is a very, very complex one. And I, I'm, I'm not making a definitive point on this, although every time I say that about the English Defence League, some far leftist or Islamist organisation says that I'm saying something supportive of them. So, um, when they first started, I was doing a, an interview in East London, and they found out I was there, and they came and tried to speak to me. And I said at that time they were all sort of what I would describe as skinheaded types of a kind that the British National Party, that is a racist, fascist party, um, the, the British, British National Party, it, they looked of that type. And we didn't really know anything about the English Defence League at the time. But I said to them, I, I, I don't want to see you, you know, go away. And I said, said it, I have to admit, in slightly stronger language. Um, and they said, we're not the British National Party. And I said, well, look, I spend a lot of my life criticizing politicians who say, but, you know, Mr. Karadawi came in, he seemed nice, and so on, and, you know, he promised he wasn't an Islamic fundamentalist, you know, and I said, you know, I could spend a lot of my time criticizing politicians for being naive on that one, so I'm afraid if you just say to me, you're not, I just don't know, I just don't know who you are, what you are. But as I wrote it somewhere at the time, one of them said to me, you know, we, we understand, we'll leave you alone, we just want to say we're just British working class guys who hate the fact that we're losing our country. And if you're a um, member of, you know, the, I don't like thinking of it myself, I'm pretty, you know, I'm privileged in the position I'm in. I'm not a working class unemployed guy. I have a job, I, I have a voice in the media and so on. When somebody says that to you, I can tell you it's a pretty wrenching thing. Um, and it is a question that a lot of us have asked. What, what do we expect people to do? Those of us who have a voice in the media and who make arguments and politicians and so on. What do we expect people to do on the ground? Now, when they had their first demonstrations, they said things like, they had posters saying things like, you know, Sharia uh, persecutes women, and Sharia is against homosexuals and so on. I said, if, if those are the things you're going on, then that's great with me. You know, that, that, that would be, you know, if you were ever to have a grassroots movement opposed to these things, that would be the sort of thing you would hope they would do it on. But, um, it's an extremely complex phenomenon because there have been investigations which have shown that they have extremists and BMP types in their ranks, but they have also shown they have tried to get such people out. And you have to give them the benefit of the doubt on some of that. They have tried, and it isn't easy. It's a nascent grassroots starting off young movement, and they're learning some of the mistakes as they go along. Um, and then on the other hand, there are also many people, there's a study that's coming out on Monday from the think tank demos, showing that actually the majority of their supporters online and so on certainly aren't of a sort of nativist, you know, type. They just hate what's happening. So I come back to this point really with them, that this is what happens when the mainstream loses. When the mainstream abandons its job. This is what happens, I mean, I hate to quote it in almost, it's a cliche, but this is, this as Yates said, is what happens when the center does not hold the best lack all conviction, and the rest are filled with passionate intensity. That's the problem, and I think it, it should be, to me, um, treated with nuance, treated with care, and I hate the people in the media who simply see a group of working class white guys and think, excellent, we can call them Nazis, when they would never go into a mosque and see a group of Muslims and say, you're all Islamists. I hate that. But it requires enormous care, and it's going to require enormous care in the years ahead. And, as I say, if, if they don't get in charge, if they don't get on top of the extremism of this, if they don't get on top of that, the EDL, and far worse, will be the sort of thing we will see far more of in Europe. And it will be a Europe that I think very few of us would want to be in.